Hello, my name is Jayat. Welcome to the session that discusses implementing the new Start Service Request Process Flow capability, which is available from the 21A release of Oracle Utilities Customer Cloud Service. In this session, we will talk about this new feature and how it can impact your business. We will give you an overview of the new capability and the benefits to your business. Then, we will explain what you need to consider when implementing this feature in your business. Finally, we will provide you with some additional resources. The new Start Service Request Process Flow capability helps call centre agents process Start Service Requests efficiently in a consistent manner by guiding them through the common steps and actions for starting service. Here are some of the major highlights of the new capability. There is a visual representation at the top of the process flow screen so a call centre agent can easily see how far along they are in a process flow. At the end of a process flow, a final summary displays key information related to the start service request. A call centre agent can save an in-progress process flow. This is useful if a customer does not have all the required information to proceed further at the initial contact. A saved process flow can then be resumed at a later stage to continue processing the start service request. Inline customer searching and matching. This allows a call centre agent to correctly identify the person requesting the start service to see if they already exist in the solution. If not, then the person will be automatically created as the call centre agent progresses through the process flow for the start service request. One or more additional persons may be linked to the account related to the start service request. Their details may also be updated if required. Configurable insights can be serviced on process flows. These can highlight important information to a call centre agent about the premise, service and or account. The configurability associated with processing start service requests has been greatly expanded compared to what was available in previous releases. There are a larger number of business controls or configuration options and extension points to support various business requirements. Finally, there is also support for prerequisite processing to meet implementation specific requirements. An example could be to check that the required deposit has been paid by the customer prior to actually starting service at a premise. For further details about using this new capability, please refer to the Using Start Service Request Process Flow video. Now, the new capability is an alternative option for processing start service requests rather than using the existing start-stop transaction. In this implementation advice section, we will go through what you need to consider to enable the start service request process flow capability in your business. There are three main tasks that you should complete to enable the new capability. First, you define the possible insights or information to be highlighted on the applicable start service request process flow panels. This occurs via insight types and insight groups. There are several insight types already provided. To highlight additional insights, you can configure new insight types to meet an implementation's business needs. You must also configure insight groups for the three specific insight classes shown here if the groups do not already exist. You will then update each insight group with the insight types to be highlighted. The applicable process flow panels use these insight groups to determine which insights to highlight. Next, you must configure one or more customer service request types for start service request processing. These contain the business controls or configuration options and extension points to support various business requirements. Start service request process flows and back-end customer service requests use these for processing start service requests. Multiple customer service request types may be required if the business controls or configuration options and or extension points differ between jurisdictions, that is CIS divisions and customer classes. Finally, you must configure an action method for start service request processing. When initiating a start service request, the solution initially creates a process flow and parent customer service request. The process flow type and customer service request type for these are derived from the action method. Now, this demonstration will show you what you need to configure to enable the start service request process flow capability. 
As mentioned earlier, the first task is to define messages or insights that may be displayed on the applicable steps or panels of process flows for start service requests. This is via insight types and insight groups. If insight types do not exist for the various messages or insights you want displayed, you can configure these on the insight type admin page. Here, you define the main information for each insight type. The visual structure and you also specify the algorithm that determines the message to be displayed. You also specify the visual settings to be applied to the message or insight, for example, colours. Next, you create insight groups if these do not exist for the three specific insight classes mentioned earlier. It is these insight groups that process flows based on the base product delivered start service related process flow type interrogate to determine which messages or insights need to be displayed. For each insight group, you define the valid visual structure applicable to the insight group and the various insight types that may be displayed on process flows. The example shown here is for the start stop transfer insights account based insight class. You can see that the valid visual structure applicable to this insight type is list insight and the insight type that may be displayed. The second task is to define one or more customer service request types for start service requests. There are five sections that contain various configuration options, these being main, characteristics, UI override controls, person business controls and start service controls by customer class. We will now look at each of these in a bit more detail. In the main section, the main configuration options are the various business objects to be used to process start service requests based on this customer service request type. Here you specify the parent customer service request business object which manages the overall start service request. You also specify the various child customer service request business objects which will be used for creating and or updating person account, service agreement and premise records. Next, the characteristics section is used to define characteristics both type and value to be associated with this customer service request type. The UI override controls section allows you to completely override certain UI sections on process flows for start service requests with custom replacement UI sections. The UI sections that can be overridden include the summary header section located on panels and both the new custom identification and customer identification UI sections on the customer identification panel. Now, replacing the new customer identification and customer identification sections may be useful if an implementation has customers in different states. Some of these states may have varying requirements for verifying identity or checking credit. Now, in the base product delivered start service related process flow type, each panel is built up of nested or included data areas that define the HTML to present information to a call center agent. When a customer service request type indicates a UI section is to be overridden, an extension data area replaces the UI component of the base product delivered data area with a custom replacement UI section. For more information about overriding UI sections, refer to the Understanding UI Override Control section in the Customer to Meter Administrative User Guide. The Person Business Control section allows you to define various configuration options used by the Customer Identification and Person and Account Details panels of process flows that reference this customer service request type. The first lot of configuration options are used when searching for person records. You can indicate if the person search capability should include options to allow searching by phone and or email details. You can also replace the base product delivered person search service script if you want to implement a different kind of search compared to what the base product delivered service script offers. The remaining controls in the person business control section allows you to define various configuration options separately for persons or individuals and businesses. Let's look at person controls first. The first part of the person control subsection is used by the customer identification panel. 
In particular, the configuration options from primary identifier types through to account eligible for service algorithm. The primary identifier types grid allows you to define primary identifier types for individuals related to start service requests. For each identifier type, you can indicate whether this is valid for new customers, existing customers, or both new and existing customers. For new customers, you would first want to check if they are indeed a net new customer. Along with other search criteria such as name, the identifier types allowable for new customers can be used to search for a person. If an existing person record is not found, the identifier type and value used for the search is used when creating the new person record. This is done to avoid the need to ask the customer for the same information again. You can also indicate if an identification verification or credit check should be performed. If so, you need to specify one or more algorithms that will evaluate whether this is required. You also need to configure the algorithm that will initiate the appropriate identification verification or credit check process. Now, as part of some identification verification or credit check processes, the customer's date of birth may be used. If so, you can prompt for this to be captured in process flows and also specify the person characteristic the customer's birth date will be mapped to. In order to start service, a valid account is needed. You can specify one or more algorithms to check if a person's existing accounts are eligible for starting service. You can also specify if a new account may be created when the person has one or more existing accounts that are eligible for service. Now, for more information, refer to the Verifying Identity, Checking Credit and Requiring Deposits when Starting Service section in the Customer to Meter Administrative User Guide. The remaining controls in the Person Control subsection are used by the Person and Account Details panel of Process Flows for Start Service Requests. These are used to indicate which predefined person-related attributes, if any, may be updated when starting service. You can indicate which attributes to display on process flows, which attributes not to display, or which ones to only display if there is existing information. This last setting is useful if you want to verify if existing information is still accurate, but the start service request is not focused on collecting this information. Some of the attributes that may be configured for possible updating include life support and sense of load notes, other person names and person identifiers, person contact information, person characteristics, paperless billing enrollment, and bill route type. You can also indicate if you want other persons that are linked to the account for the start service request to be displayed on a process flow. You can also define the primary identifier types that may be used for person searches for any additional persons you want to add to the account. Additionally, you can configure which specific predefined attributes, if any, may be updated with starting service for these additional persons. In the Business Controls subsection of the Person Business Controls section, you are able to define similar configuration options as in the Person Controls subsection, but for business customers. The main difference is that the date of birth information does not apply to business customers, so the related configuration options for this do not appear. The final section is Start Service Controls by Customer Class. Here you define various configuration options at each customer class level to be used by process flows that reference this customer service request type. These are primarily used by the Services to Start and Person and Account Details panels. There are seven subsections in this section, these being Common Service Controls, Deposit Service Controls, Premise based service controls, additional service controls, premise controls, account controls, and customer contact controls. We will now look at each of these in a bit more detail. The common service control subsection enables you to force call center agents to use a date packer when populating the start date on the services to start panel. This prevents them from mistyping the start date. In addition to this, you can specify an algorithm to validate that the entered date is within a reasonable range. You can also define whether the standard industrial classification code, 
business activity and start requested by fields are displayed for call centre agents to populate when selecting services to start. The Deposit Service Control subsection defines the configuration options around deposits for start service requests. This is primarily used by the Customer Identification panel and the Deposit section on the Services to Start panel. Here you define whether a deposit is required, never required or will be evaluated by an algorithm for new customers. You can plug in your own implementation specific algorithm which contains the logic for your business rules to determine if a deposit is required. If a deposit may be required, you specify the default CIS division and default service agreement type to be populated on process flows for start service requests. You can also define whether a call centre agent can override the default service agreement type and deposit amount on process flows, and if more than one deposit service agreement is allowable. Next, you can define how deposits will be billed, in one single amount or in instalments. If billed by instalments, you have the recurring charge settings of billing by instalment amount, number of instalments or both. In addition to this, you can specify various limits such as minimums and maximums to be applied to the instalment amount or number of instalments respectively. The premise based service control subsection is used when starting service for premise based services. This is primarily used by the services to start panel and when pending service agreements are being created. The determined services to start algorithm is used to get a list of service agreements to start for service points at the starting premise. These are displayed on the services to start panel. You can also indicate whether the customer read and allow estimate premise based service agreement attributes can be displayed for call centre agents to populate. The process services to start algorithm is used to create pending start service agreements for all services to be started including deposit, service point based and additional services. Now if the base product delivered algorithms for these plugin spots do not meet your business rules you can plug in your own implementation specific algorithms. In addition to this, you can also define whether start service note fields are available for call centre agents to populate when selecting services to start. This is typically used to capture notes to pass to field activities for starting service. You can define whether these are captured at the premise level, which will apply to all service points linked to a premise and or at the service point level. The additional service control subsection is related to starting service agreements for non-deposit and non-service point based services as part of the start service request process. Recurring charitable contributions is one example. This is used by the additional service agreements section on the services to start panel. If additional service agreements may be started, the service agreement type search option in this panel retrieves various service agreement types for additional service agreements you may want to start. This is based on the SQL in the additional SA's search zone. If you want to further restrict the service agreement types that may be selected from, you can plug in your own implementation specific override search zone here. The default additional services to start grid is used to display pre-selected additional services you may want to start. The call centre agent can choose not to start these pre-selected additional services. Now the premise control section is used to indicate which predefined premise attributes if any can be updated when starting service. You can indicate which attributes to display in process flows, which attributes not to display, or which ones to only display if there is existing information. This last setting is useful if you want to verify if existing information is still accurate but the start service request is not focused on collecting this information. The account control section is used to indicate which additional predefined account attributes, if any, may be updated when starting service. You can indicate which attributes to display on process flows. Finally, the customer contact control section is used to indicate 
if you want to create a customer contact when starting service. Here you can specify the customer contact class and customer contact type for the customer contact to be created. The third task to enable the start service request process flow capability is to define an action method for the start service action method role if one does not already exist. If one does exist, you will need to update this action method. This action method is referenced when you click the new customer start service hyperlink in the Control Central Search Query Portal zone or when you click the start service hyperlink in the premise tree dashboard zone. Here you define the default type of process flow to be initiated for a start service request and the customer service request type that will be referenced by the process flow. You also have the option to plug in override process flow types and customer service request types for start service requests if this is applicable to an implementation. For additional information about the new start service request process flow capability, please see the Oracle Utilities Customer Cloud Service Library on Oracle Help Center, which is available at docs.oracle.com. This concludes this presentation. Thank you for watching.